I was watching a video the other day and the question popped into my mind. Do microphones even matter for guitar recording in a home studio anymore? Well, with the money you would spend to buy a good load box like a UED Oxbox for example, you can buy three or four microphones which you can then use to record other stuff as well. So I would say yes and no. It is not as simple as it seems in the beginning. Of course, uh, recording with microphones has two drawbacks when compared to any load box. The first one being noise and the second one being that you need some type of knowledge on how to put a microphone on a guitar cab. But the second one is not as scary as it seems in the beginning. So if you only want to record electric guitar and can't turn up loud an amp, of course the load box is the only option. So today we will take a look at the differences between the four main types of microphones when recording electric guitar taking into consideration the other uses that they may have in a home studio. Of course, you can't start talking about recording electric guitars without the Shure SM57. It is the most popular microphone on guitar cabinets for about 60 years now. Especially on sounds with a bit of gain, but also in general use, there's just no way you haven't heard a 57 somewhere in your favorite records. Sound-wise, its famous mid-boost helps a guitar cut through a mix, especially on heavier genres. Number two is some kind of ribbon microphone. Usually the companion of a Sur SM57 is a ribbon mic, which due to its sonic characteristics, which are bassier and more mellow, complement really well the sound of the Sur. Alone, it provides to me a more realistic image from what I hear from an amp in a room, but depending on the tone and the music context, it can get too bassy and get lost in a mix. <laughs> Number three is a large diaphragm condenser. This is something I have been experimenting with more and more over the past year. Usually it is not the first type of microphone that comes to mind when you want to record electric guitar, but I was watching the Beatles documentary Get Back where they were recording all the guitar amps with Neumann U87s. I have also seen Eric Valentine using a condenser microphone to record a cabinet as a whole from a bit further back. In general, this type of microphone will sound a bit bright when put right against the cabinet, so a bit of distance may help you get the most out of it. But with a bit of trial, you can get the sound of the whole cab versus a single speaker when you are close miking. And finally, number four is a small diaphragm condenser. Similar to the previous one, I have only started experimenting with small diaphragm condensers on guitar cabinets recently. What is interesting is that they sound similar to the large diaphragm, but with a bit more balanced sound. And I have started to really enjoy them close to the speaker or a bit further back. Now of course, each of these microphones can be used to record other stuff as well, but if we are looking at this from the perspective of only having one microphone, I could rule out the ribbon and the small condenser. Just because I think that a Sure SM57 or a large diaphragm are much more versatile. So how would I choose between these two microphones? I think that if I was doing mainly electric guitar, I would go with the Sure, while if I needed to record acoustic stuff and vocals also, I would go with a large diaphragm condenser. Of course, there are many examples with songs recorded entirely with the Sure SM57, but that's just my personal preference. That's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Dalam, and I'll see you in the next one.
Thank <laughs> you.